Christian Cage promo. This, this was, was the most awesome non-wrestling thing on this show. Yes. It was also very long, but it deserved to be. It needed to be. So he comes out. He has security guards with him. Calls out Adam Copeland, who eventually comes out after uh, what I assume were technical delays playing his music. But he comes out eventually. So Christian asks security to leave. He wants to talk to Adam face to face. You challenge me for next week in Montreal, but we're not going to make it to Montreal because I am sorry. Everyone thinks I'm saying that because I'm alone now. You've taken out Kill Switch. You've taken out Nick Wayne. It was funny. He called him Kill Switch twice and then called him Luchasaurus on accident. And I called him Kill Switch again. But I doesn't want to talk about any of that. He wants to talk about their past together. He, he was so mad when Adam took out Kill Switch. He got in the car, started driving, and turned into a road trip of reflection. Thought about the times they were making towns, borrowing the mom's car, drive up and down. They were broke, having the time of their lives. They were going to make it. And damn it, did we make it. We were the greatest tag team that ever lived. Multi-time world champions. Two of the greatest careers in the history of our sport. But take away, the re- take away the wrestling, and it goes even deeper. We all know you grew up with a single mom, and the crowd can immediately sense where this is going. <laughs> you didn't have a father figure, but I'm not your father. I am your, fa- I am your brother, because my father became your father. You went on family trips with us. You sat at the family table. When you misbehaved, Dad disciplined you, but he dusted you off, told you he's still your biggest fan. And he's still your biggest fan to this day. We are not two random guys thrown together. I love you, man. We are family. I know your mom passed away a few years ago, and she wanted to see us team one last time. Let's do this for her. One last journey as a tag team for Judy, for the Jude Meister, for your mom. And Copeland's gotten to. And he turns his back, and he's rubbing his chin, he's checking his eyes, and behind him, the worst human in the world, Christian Cage, is folding up that TNT championship belt he uses as a weapon and he's bracing himself getting a good stance and he rears back to swing and he lunges and Copeland turns around and kicks him right in the balls because he's not dumb <laughs> so Christian's down on the ground whimpering in pain nice try dumbass Copeland replies next week this belt's coming home with me and uh, there was some editing here I think Christian called him a motherfucker that's uh, what happened but uh, that's that. It is Christian versus... I think, Edge said it, I think he said, fuck you. That could be it, too. And uh, for those of you listening who know exactly what he said, Vinny and I are on the West Coast, and it was edited on the West Coast feed. Good point. For those of you that were watching live on the East Coast, I think he said, fuck you, and it went straight through. Everybody heard it all over the world. Yeah. So the guy with his finger on the button was uh, enamored with the promo or something, wasn't paying attention. Been caught up in the moment. Yes. So there you go. Christian Cage versus Adam Copeland, TNT title next week, Montreal, Canada. That will be awesome. And this was awesome. It's an absolutely fantastic promo. And uh, <laughs> Christian is such a creepy little bastard. And uh, the only thing that, that uh, I guess is not really a criticism, because I don't know where they're going. Oh, go fuck yourself is what he said. Which is what Christian said to him. Yeah. So that would make sense. So... Uh, this was like such an amazing promo that even though it was very obvious what was happening here, Christian doesn't want to defend the title against him. He's trying to get out of it. He did such a great job talking about their history and why they should be together that fans were actually chanting for them to get together near the end of this promo. And what's funny is eventually they are going to get together. And... This would have been a great promo to actually cut when they're getting together. Yes. But now you've cut it. So uh, I guess he's just going to have to save him or something at some point. We'll have to figure out see where it goes. Yes. I am, though, now 100% on board with uh, Adam needs to win the title next week. Oh, of course. And then uh, Christian uh, uh, regains it at the pay-per-view when, when, when Shayna screws Adam. And then uh, then Adam can turn. And he realize, God damn, Christian's right. His, his ways are better than mine. Main event here on Dynamite. Continental Classic Gold, Gold League match, Jay White versus Swerve Strickland, both coming in at 1-0 with three points each. This was two evil bastards going at it. You know what it reminded me of is that, uh, I think it was on Saturday Night's Main Event, but there was a heel Randy Savage Intercontinental Champion versus heel Jake the Snake Roberts match, where both guys are absolutely terrified of each other because they know this guy is just as evil as I am. Who knows what depths they'll stoop to. 
Uh, they kind of went a different way here because the each guy was perfectly willing to uh, fight the other's diabolical tactics, but they knew what was coming. What was coming? Swerve was out of this world great in this match, and he always is. But uh, I have compared him in the past to, to to Bret Hart, the way he paces himself, and the way he's poised in the ring, and, and 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 the way he's always in control. I saw comparisons to Barry Windham, but uh, either way, this guy is a, a hell of a throwback. And the way he just glides from move to move to move. I was about to type fluid, but Excalibur took the words right out of my mouth and used that term. Meanwhile, Brian Danielson is critiquing his covers. Praising them, I should say. Criti uh, uh, very happy and proud of the way the man is covering his opponent and trying to pin him. Because Brian is a great coach. All about details. So, the ref is very nearly bumped. And this happened last week against Rush. And uh, Jay had a low blow and is moving one. Here the ref is bumped. Swerve, uh, uh, Jay goes to the low blow. But Swerve, of course, is as evil as him. You can't cheat a cheater. He knows it's coming. He blocks the low blow, hits a backbreaker. Gets the house call and a Swerve stomp for two. And they did such a great job of setting this up. So having they gave Swerve everything and everything and everything. To the point where it felt like they've given him everything. So the bigger established star can win at the end. But it feels like they gave him everything. But no, after uh, he finally hit the sleeper suplex, he tried the Blade Runner, Swerve countered it, and Swerve Strickland pinned Jay White clean. Out-wrestled him, cradled him, pinned him one, two, three, clean as a sheet. Jay White's first clean loss in AEW. It was an awesome match, a major, major result. I'm very, very happy they were doing something with Swerve. We'll see, like you say, uh, Moxley's probably going to win. We'll see how it goes. But they're not just ignoring that death match and leaving him right where he was. They're doing something with him. Uh, great match. Well, everybody has to win and lose. But, I mean, Jay White was, uh, he only had one loss. And then he had the title match with MJF. And coming off that, they're beating him. So Swerve is going to get beaten. And uh, pretty much I think everybody's going to get beaten. Although... In my booking scenario, Moxley does not get beaten, but I guess we shall find out. I guess he can still get beaten and win the entire thing. But uh, this match, what I saw of it, was uh, was excellent. Not as good as the uh, the Mark Briscoe match. I think it was fantastic. But uh, very, very good match. And they have been very careful to position uh, Swerve in the babyface role. For all of his matches yeah. in this tournament thus far. I'm glad you mentioned that. I forgot to mention that. So it will be interesting yeah. to see what happens when, in fact... He's not booked in that position. Yes. When he faces another heel, will they cheer Swerve? How will they position him when he's facing, I guess, another baby face, actually? Uh, yeah. How will that, uh, how will that uh, go? But he wrestled Jay Lethal last week and won, and he wrestled uh, uh, Jay White here, and he's got his shoulder all taped up, so from that death match, and from the get-go, Jay's targeting that shoulder, establishing Swerve as the underdog, which, for most human beings, will make you want to cheer for him. And uh, and, and there you go. And they, and they did, and he won, and they were happy. So Swerve and Moxley at this point tied with six points each. Roosh and Jay White have three points each. Jay Lethal, Mark Briscoe still at zero. And, of course, we've got the uh, matches coming up on Saturday. Brian Danielson, Eddie Kingston, Andrade, and Daniel Garcia. This Daniel Garcia, this poor fucker. Another loss on his record. Mm. And Brody King and Claudio Castagnoli. That's... Some awesome matches right there. Yeah. That sounds you great. know, there should be at least one upset in this tournament. So I guess it's possible Daniel Garcia beats Andrade. But uh, my guess is not. We'll see how it goes. Anyway, that was Dynamite. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. Do you have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, 
Full access to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.